the fact of having, and we're lucky that it happened on camera, because that means that it's not just our say-so. We could go back and we could find the presentation of the model. But the fact of having models discussed early that then predict actual physical phenomena <coughs> later on, mm -hmm. or predict the revelation of evidence in the case of the second model here, the idea that yep. maybe there was not an attempt to reduce the number of COVID deaths early on. Um, the fact of having those models means that the things that get said to us about why we ended up right so frequently mm. are now falsified, right? The things being you got lucky, uh, a, a broken clock straight two times a day, that sort right. of thing. <laughs> Everybody guessed. You guessed and you happened to guess right, but somebody would have guessed right. right. So this wasn't about insight. It was about you got lucky. Congratu congratulations. Mm -hmm. Right. That's sort of the uh, the Scott Adams version of things. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Sam Harris's version is you were right for the wrong reasons. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, no. When your model turns out to be predictive of autopsies, you're right for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's just the way it works. And then there's the thing that gets said to us about, well, okay, you were contrarians. And really what they're saying, which frankly I would almost settle for because it's good enough to get where we need to go, is yes, the, what you were officially told was 100% wrong and a contrarian therefore didn't fall for any of it, which is not what happened in this case, right? You and I were very careful about, we didn't fall into any known camp, right? COVID is a dangerous disease. The vaccines are also dangerous and you're not actually trading one danger from the other. You're actually compounding them if you get the so-called vaccine. No, but I, so, you know, I, as you know, I have a particular sort of visceral reaction to the idea of contrarian. Um, which, you know, has, because it was being said uh, with affection in some cases, like it was <clears throat> people defending us, saying, well, they, you know, they're contrarians. Like, no, 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 and no, uh, in part because um, I disagree that we didn't fall into a known camp. I, I understand what you mean by that, which is that, uh, like, oh, well, the people who are skeptical of vaccines also think COVID isn't a big deal. Like, that tended to be a, 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 a two opinions that went together. And the people who were gung-ho on vaccines take COVID really, really seriously. That was also two positions that often went together. If you were just voting with ideology, if you were team blue, it was the latter. If you were team red, it was the former. And okay, but if, like, the, the, the camp that we fell into was camp science. Right, that, which is which is skepticism of those things that come at you until you can assess them using the tools that you have, using as many of the things that you can see or sense uh, with your own senses as possible, but also then you know trying it out, extrapolating, testing it against other things, looking at the papers, which is what we'll do next. Looking you know looking at the papers that are being trotted out. It's like oh well, but science says boom, and I'm like okay, I'll let, let's let's see what science says. Yeah, it doesn't. See here. This is where the bodies are buried. So, you know, we did that kind of thing because we can and we do, and lots of people are trying to do that. And some people, you know, don't have a background in, you know, scientific jargon enough to make it through the papers. And um, we're more easily compelled. And, you know, some of those people went, actually, no, I can't assess that. And I know it, um, but I'm going to reject it out of hand. And some of the, and a lot of people went, you know what, I can't assess that. Um, and I know that I can't assess it, so I'm just going to accept it out of hand. And both of those positions are understandable, but neither of them is what we did. Yep. And well. and and a lot of people didn't do that either. So it, it, it is a known camp, um, which I'm just I'm going to call it camp science. Well, OK. <laughs> It, it is it is a distinction not worth not worth fighting over the fact that it wasn't a known slate. Right. There's obviously a method, but that's kind of the point, is the method mm -hmm. involves building a model, and how do you know that that model is anything other than a lucky guess? Right. Well, it's predictive going forward, not just yep. not, not just was it predictive in the moment, yep. it's predictive even going forward. Okay, the last thing I want to say is, okay, so you've got a model, and then you have reason to believe that that model is accurate because it predicts things that are hard to predict, like will this gentleman's brain show lymphocytes on autopsy yeah okay and then here is what an extrapolation looks like not only do we have the you're going to find damage across the body and you've only noticed it in the heart um, because heart failure is so conspicuous but this is going to be pathology after pathology that's one thing mm -hmm. the other thing is this the transfection technology that the mrna vaccines utilized 
was in one way absolutely special and in another way not that special and it is the distinction between the special and the not special that tells us how to evaluate the relative risks which we did correctly okay mm -hmm. Everybody who is coming to realize how dangerous these vaccines are and were has focused on the mRNA vaccines, right? They are most dangerous. Why is that? Well, you and I said early on that the number of novel features involved in the mRNA vaccines was by far the highest. Mm -hmm. And therefore, even things like the DNA vaccines, which are truly novel, the DNA vaccines in this case, the, the adenovirus, the adenovirus vectored vaccines, right? Mm -hmm. Even those, which are highly novel, right? That had not been done before. But even those are less novel by virtue of the fact that instead of using uh, lipid nanoparticle coats, which are completely untargeted, they borrowed targeting from a pre-existing virus that had an evolutionary history that therefore would have limited the places that are transfected to a uh -huh. smaller number of tissues. Yep. So not safe, but much safer. Mm -hmm. I would also point out- And, and we, we did, we were, we were when asked um, both by friends and family and, and on air sometimes in the Q and A, um, you know, if, if you have to, which one would you do? And um, in the US here, the option was J and J. Right. And, and, and that turned out to be correct in spades. Yeah. The yeah. pristine, stable Ben work shows yeah. uh, a slight all cause mortality benefit for the DNA version. I don't know whether that will hold up over the long term because, of course, pathologies right. will eat away at that. But nonetheless, the point is you've got a spectrum of hazard. The mRNA LNP uh, vectored transfection agents are the maximally novel, least targeted of all, okay? <laughs> Second, you have the DNA uh, adenovectored vaccines, which are highly novel, but have some sort of targeting that would have come from some virus that would have had some interest in keeping you on your feet, right? Probably a pretty good interest, so they would not transfect nearly as indiscriminately. And then there are the best vaccines that we have, right? Which are attenuated virus vaccines. Why are attenuated virus vaccines the best vaccines that we have? Because they trigger a proper, not very serious infection that then causes the immune system to have the proper reaction to an infection. It's like a little practice infection so that you don't get the real infection, right? Mm -hmm. Is that cost-free? No, because the exact thing that I've said, this model where your own cells spot uh, what they regard to be as infected tissue and target it, that will happen in an attenuated virus vaccine, and it will happen in the adenovector virus vaccine. What is so different is the completely indiscriminate nature of the, of the lipid nanoparticle targeting, or lack thereof. So anyway, overarching message here is Product of science is models. The utility of models is that once you have reason to believe that they are accurate based on the fact that they predict things, you can extrapolate from them. And here are uh, two different extremely important extrapolations that come from the model that you and I develop here on air, right? One of them is the damage will be across the body and have implications well beyond the heart. And the other is that you can look at virus or vaccine technologies and you can specify how likely to be dangerous they are based on uh, the underlying model that we've uh, discussed over the course of many, many episodes.